All right, guys, Mike here with Wilderness Warriors 1 on YouTube. And uh, the project I'm working on right now is a rocket stove uh, for cooking purposes in uh, the case of emergencies and you know, general stuff, camping, whatnot. I plan on you know, taking this thing everywhere uh, in the outdoors to play with it and use it just because they're so efficient. And I'm working on designs for a heater uh, to be used as well as a baking utensil to go on top of this uh, as a heat box so you can bake pizzas and stuff like that. Um, but uh, for, to, to start off with, just going to do a basic uh, rocket stove for heat, or for cooking. And uh, what I started with here was just a uh, used 20-pound propane tank. was pretty much junk. I think I picked it up at the dump over in the scrap and recycling area. And I'm actually using 4-inch EMT conduit. Um, it's a little hard to deal with. I'm actually uh, going to do two more stoves using other materials as well. I'm uh, going to do some 4-inch square tubing and mate that up to the 4.5-inch or 4-inch EMT conduit. And uh, see, just because some of these, uh, the cuts, if you don't have a plasma cutter and you're cutting it out by hand, uh, are very, very painstaking and uh, painful in some instances. Um, when you're dealing with round stuff, you have to wind up cutting round holes so things will made up. And notching pipes, and something that is not easily done, uh, I've got hole saws and all, but trying to do that with uh, a standard drill and not being able to lock something that large into a drill press uh, or pipe clamp or uh, pipe face uh, is a little hard. But, as you see, I've got the bottom cut out. Uh, those two pipes there will be um, the feed tube and the riser. This one is a little longer. It's 15 inches tall. This will be the riser. This will be the feed tube. They will made up at a 90 degree angle. Something like that there. And will be welded. And then I've got a flat plate that I'll be welding onto this end to close that in for a flat base. Uh, and then once everything there is cleaned up and welded specifically at 90 degrees, then it actually slides in here. And then this pipe will be sticking out something like that. And it will be welded around that top seam. And then this piece will be trimmed. This is the bottom of the tank. And it will go back in there like so and be welded back up. This was the original base. It'll be cleaned up and actually welded back on, although I probably will not use this because I plan on making feet that will stick down so this thing will stand up at a regular barbecue type height or, or closer by the time you get a pot on it. And then I will bend up some handles to go on the side and this will be your riser, your combustion chamber. It will stick up like that and be welded around the top. Uh, it will be filled with a mixture of perlite and vermiculite which will fill this gap all the way around the inside of it before I weld the bottom back on and that will be a uh, insulation in order to keep the combustion chamber as hot as possible. Uh, the ideal goal is to get it to around 1600 degrees so it's completely smokeless and burns up all the gas that's emitted by the fuel right. put in. I have uh, got the combustion tube and the feed tube pretty much finished. Uh, welding's not that great. This welder I've got now is not uh, just a basic flux core welder. Um, it works fair. And uh, anyway, I took a square cap or plate off of a metal receptacle, welded it to the bottom for the cover, and then uh, just roughly cut off the edges. Doesn't have to be perfect since it's all going to be sealed inside the propane tank. And I took a piece of 16 gauge steel, uh, I think it was 12 by 18, and uh, cut off a sheet about four and an eighth inches to sit in there for the feed tube, and I just tacked it at the front and at the rear on the inside. So I can't move. A little bit of air gap down the side, but I don't think that makes any difference at all. All right, so far I have got my tubes welded into the tank and I have just filled the tank up as much as I'm going to with a mixture of vermiculite and perlite. And I have shaken it around. I'll show you the welds uh, when I turn it back up right after I weld the bottom on. And the bottom is just the uh, piece that I actually cut out. It's gonna lay back in there similar to that. And weld back in, I've gotta clean the edges up and. Weld it back in, and I'm going to weld the bottom ring back onto it so it can stand upright. And uh, later I'm going to put some angle iron legs on it to raise the height of it up uh, to where it's had a, a decent cooking height once you got a, a pot or a frying pan on it. And uh, then I'm probably going to pick up some uh, fence or gate handles, uh, just some galvanized stuff or zinc plated from Home Depot or Lowe's and weld them to the sides just so you can grab it and carry it around. And I'll show you that uh, after I get done welding the top back on or bottom back on. All right, guys, rocket stove out of a propane tank project. I am just about done here. I still don't have the feet on it, uh, but I don't have the materials to do that tonight, so 
Uh, I've got all my welds done. I've got everything pretty much cleaned up. I've got all my splatter uh, off of it. And I've got my pot support rods on. Uh, this is just a uh, quarter inch round stock, solid. Uh, bought at Home Depot. Uh, it actually took almost 12 feet of rod. I uh, have small rods here coming up for the risers uh, so that all of these that come in are pretty close to being level. Uh, should be certainly level enough to uh, to handle a pot or a frying pan or something like that without too much wobble in it. And uh, I can hammer them down a little bit if necessary. Um, I'm also going to have uh, angle iron feet and I'm going to weld nuts into it and actually have uh, washers welded onto all thread at the bottom so the feet will actually be slightly adjustable. Uh, about an inch maybe on each side is going to be about it. But I think that uh, everything here is certainly solid enough uh, with the dimensions of this. I really haven't even measured it across, but it's only a half inch larger than a propane tank. Uh, but my goal here is to be able to use this to boil uh, water for purification and stuff like that in a large stock pot, like a 50 liter or a 50 quart um, aluminum stock pot for like uh, deep frying a turkey or something like that. In. So that is my goal. Uh, unfortunately, it has been raining uh, for a couple of days here and everything is absolutely saturated. So I can't even fire this thing up yet. It'll probably be next weekend before I get to fire it up. So I'm going to get the legs on it tomorrow and uh, probably get this thing painted. It's going to be painted all black. And then I'm going to try to round up some dry materials to uh, fire it up and see how it does. Thanks. All right, this is the first firing. Use a little newspaper to uh, get it started. So you see some caught there on my support bars and floating around. Uh, but I've got extremely damp wood, so I wanted to make sure that I got it started. Looks like everything is pretty much burning as it's supposed to. Certainly not up to temperature yet, because we still have flames coming up. Very visible, and there's no swirl yet, so... I'm going to let this burn for a few minutes and keep feeding some sticks into it, and uh, I'll be back with you. Alright guys, uh, Several minutes later, I ran some wood through this, and although this is damp wood, it uh, actually is burning pretty good. I know you can't see it, but uh, our temperatures are up. The outside of this container is uh, pretty pretty warm to the touch, uh, even though it is insulated with the perlite and all. Um, the uh, flames, I just shoved some more wood in, so the flames are tall right now, but when they settle down, they actually do spiral at the bottom, and uh, the temperatures are, are very hot. Um, you can see the feed tube in there and my ash down below, so I've got a good ash bed. And uh, this thing is certainly burning as well as any of the examples I've seen on YouTube. So I'm very pleased with it so far. Uh, in the next couple of days, I will probably be uh, doing some testing as far as how it cooks. Um, I bought a uh, large frying pan at Sam's Club to use specifically on this thing so it spreads the heat out well. Um, I also bought a uh, porcelain covered uh, oven type Dutch oven uh, to be used on this thing as well uh, for cooking some stuff. So I might actually try doing some chili or something like that on it here soon. You can see the flames die down and I'll get the camera. And going to be doing some testing like that. I'm also going to pick up a large aluminum stock pot from Sam's Club and uh, do some boil test on this thing. I want to know uh, basically uh, how long it's going to take to boil about two gallons of water or uh, make like a big jambalaya or something like that or crawfish boil or something. Uh, something large to feed, you know, 8, 10, 12 people at a time uh, since that was my whole goal in, in building this thing. So as I do testing, I'll have some more videos posted on this. And uh, if you please rate this video, let me know what you think.